thank you for uh, joining us for another episode in our Movement Moments. I'm really happy that Mac Peer, founder of Movement.org and uh, MovementDay.com is with us today. Max, thanks for being with us. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks. So, Mac, I've heard you talk about um, the five disruptions um, and would love to hear your insights on what those disruptions are and what kind of God's doing, what you think God is doing through those disruptions. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, Craig. Uh, my wife and I moved to New York City in 1984, and the year that we moved there uh, was the beginning of what I describe as a murder epidemic. Uh, we had uh, an incident in December of that year where a German guy by the name of Bernard Gatz shot five unarmed African-American men on the subway system. And that racial violence escalated for a decade. And in 1994, we had eight murders a day for a year. That was really the first major disruption that we lived through. Uh, we had a major financial collapse in 1995, 9-11, and then we had the, uh, the financial crisis of 2008, and now the coronavirus. So that's been really five disruptions in the last 25 years. And what we have seen as a result of those disruptions is that that two things have really been at play. Uh, we've seen God's providence in guiding us personally and organizationally to start working together and more carefully with other churches and organizations. And then it, it's caused us to pivot uh, in a way that's become much more fruitful. Uh, in the Movement Day context, we, we really came together out of the crisis of 9-11 and the 2008 financial crisis and I really believe that if we had not had those two things happen, we would not have become interdependent enough to birth Movement Day in 2010. And now we're tracking interest in 300 cities around the world. So from the long perspective, uh, God really in his providence uh, uses these major disruptions to, to affect things. And as I was uh, thinking about it this week, I, I really have come to the conviction that, that God is ready to bring about a spiritual awakening and, and the height of the awakening will be in proportion to the depth of disruption that precedes it. But we have a lot to anticipate, I really believe, in the next few years as a result of what we're experiencing right now. That's beautiful. Uh, I know you're talking to a lot of leaders globally around the world. Uh, what are you hearing from those leaders and where are you seeing God show up uh, working through his people in those countries and cities? Uh, I've, I've been privileged to do some coaching in three different contexts. One context is in uh, Southeast Asia, uh, which arguably is the most complex part of the world religiously, uh, Muslim background, Buddhist background, uh, India, which is close by, is Hindu background. And one of our leaders there in, uh, in Jakarta, which is the second largest Muslim city in the world, comes from a Muslim background, uh, became a follower of Jesus about 25 years ago, planted a church and now is the uh, representative for Indonesia to the Australian consulate. Uh, he is leading our movement day in Jakarta. They have a great relationship with the governor there, and it's exciting to see the, the body of Christ rally. Uh, in Southern Europe, uh, we're seeing leaders come together from cities that might be two and a half million people, but only have a thousand followers. And one of the countries we're working with is in Albania, and one of our leaders there, his name is Zef, he said that in 1991, there were no known believers in Albania. And as a result of the collapse of communism, uh, many people began to follow Jesus in places like Albania and Serbia and Bulgaria. And we're seeing these leaders come together with a great hunger to impact their cities. Uh, so those are just a couple of snapshots of, of how we're seeing God uh, rise people out of very difficult circumstances to, to really lead movements. That leads me to my next question, really final question for this session. How are you encouraged and how do you want to encourage other people as they're going through this? Uh, I'm, I'm encouraged by the, the level of resolve that I see leaders have uh, to really uh, impact their community, to serve their churches. Uh, uh, we're, we're really getting a sense that, that people feel deeply called uh, to where they are and they're, they're willing to sacrifice and do uh, whatever it takes. Uh, I'm privileged to work on a uh, privileged to work on a book project right now. I'm interviewing about 20 leaders over the course of a couple of weeks. And uh, this week I was interviewing uh, a leader that almost got a life sentence uh, for prison. And God rescued him from that. And now he's helping people that uh, have walked uh, through that journey. And 
he was telling me a story where his church worked with the legal community in New York to offer uh, a pardon for people of low level crime. And they, they sent out 2000 letters of invitation, 800 people showed up uh, at their church uh, to, to have that opportunity. They call it a clean slate. And uh, that's really the power of the gospel. And to see that in so many difficult contexts all over the world uh, is a real privilege. And so uh, being uh, quarantined here really gives time to hear stories and, and see all the ways that God is at work. That's great, Mac. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Um, there are articles, Mac's written a couple articles that we posted on the, the uh, top of movement.org under the COVID banner. So uh, you definitely want to go take a look at those. We'll be post, posting more as we move forward too. Mac, thank you so much. Yeah, Bless thank you. you much. Thank you for everything you're doing. Yeah.